Hey guys, how's it going? It's Dilmer again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you very much for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. And today I'm pretty excited because I'm actually gonna walk you through a new shader that I created. This shader is basically based on the formation shader that I created last time, except that we're gonna be introducing a new node that I started working with, and that is the checkboard node. I'm also gonna be showing you how to create a bloom effect that is gonna really make the scene stand out. I'm also gonna do some kind of tweaks in the post-processing effect that I think you're gonna like. So let's jump into Unity and start looking at it. All right, guys, so this is a scene that we're gonna be creating. Let me show you how it looks. I'm gonna hit play. And let me lower the volume just a tiny bit. So, so as you can see, the, the scene is playing and the spheres are getting modified by the, you know, the changes in the audio. Let me, let me go ahead and mute it so that I can explain it. And in the previous videos, I did a new project that was called Unity Audio Spectrum. So what I'm going to do here is I'm, I'm also going to continue on that, but except we're going to create a new scene, which is the scene that we're seeing right now. I actually went ahead and modified the previous scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to revert the changes that I did through source control. I'm going to be trying to recreate what I just did here exactly or as close as we can. So if you notice, um, you know, like I, like I said on the previous video, we we're basically sending all the different spectrum data that we're getting from the audio. And then I'm using the audio to just modify the, the noise scale. I also did a lot of changes on the post-processing effects. You can kind of see that we're getting some chromatic variation on the, on the corners. We're getting a lot of bloom and, and then basically some outlines around the sphere. So it really gives it a really, really cool look. So I want to show you what I did there, what changes I did and, you know, some of the tweaks that I, that I apply to make it look like this. So first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to stop the, stop the game from playing and I'm going to pull up my terminal. And what I'm going to be doing now, which is, which is something that I'm starting now is I created a new branch and that branch is basically this one that I just show you is basically that scene. So I'm going to be reverting back to master. And now that I revert back to master, you'll see that we're going to be loading the original scene. And this is the scene that you guys are familiar with because this is the one that I that I gave you in the previous video. If you haven't watched that video, don't worry about it because I'm going to put that in the description of this video and you can, you know, more than welcome to look at it. You can also look at this one, watch this one and then watch that one. That's completely fine. So let's start by doing a couple of things in this one. I have you know, this scene that, that we have right now, but I don't want to, if I check this into source control and I provide you with this project, I want you, I want you to be able to look at multiple scenes. I want you to be able to look at this scene and also the new scene that is going to have a completely new shader. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this one a shader spectrum and we're going to duplicate the shader spectrum scene. And we're also going to call it, we can call it shader spectrum, but we can probably in this case, we can just call it, we can just call it two. And then basically this, the, the previous one is underscore one. That's fine. So just know that number two is going to be for the video that we're doing right now. We might, we might go back and change these names for now. I think, I think that's fine if we start with that. So then now that we have basically shader spectrum to create it, let's double click and make sure that we're on that. And I'm going to focus on the scene view just for, just for a minute. So double click on the sphere. And this is basically what we're seeing right now from the, you know, from the camera view. What I'm gonna do is, let's put it right on the side. And what I wanna do is I want to duplicate what, we, what we're seeing right now on the, on the sphere. And so what I'm gonna do is just duplicate that object and I'll probably just resize, resize some of these. Let's put this one, we don't need that one to be that big. And we don't see a lot of, you know, a lot of the screen. That, that's fine for now. We will adjust it in just a minute. So just move the sphere up and then we can just align those two together. And let's see. So the one on the, yeah, the one on the right, I want to move down a tiny bit. Because I want to have basically one on this side, the other one on the other side, and one on the top, just like I show you on the, on the other scene. Now let's duplicate another one. And we're just going to put that one on the on the top. 
we can leave them to be the same size for now i'll change the size later and i think that's good now let's just arrange the the hierarchy and what i'm gonna do is let's let's name it so we know we know which one is which so this one's gonna be the one on the top so we'll just call that one underscore one then this one's gonna be the one on the right so I'll just call that one underscore three and then the one above it it's gonna be underscore two excellent so as you notice we have a deformation material associated with it and i don't want to modify that one because that one belongs to the the first scene i want to make sure that we keep that one intact so i'm going to go into materials and we're going to rename this one let's rename it to underscore one and we're going to duplicate it and that's going to basically create a new material called underscore two so that's that's perfect so on each of these spheres what i'm going to do is i'm going to drag and drop the underscore two material and then associate it with that game object and what that's going to do it's going to set the material to be the deformation underscore two it looks at like that it's all working fine perfect so now the other thing that i want to do to for preparation let's go into shaders and we're going to rename this shader to be underscore one which is going to be the original shader and then duplicate it to create a new shader now let's go back into the materials and deformation underscore two and see how it has the formation underscore one we want to assign it to the other one because i'm going to be changing that to be you know to have a checkboard node which is going to give it a little a different look and looks like that looks good perfect now if we tweak so now that we have a new shader we can tweak some of these settings i can change the noise scale i'll we'll probably go down here to be something like you know more round and and that's fine because these are going to be changed by the by the audio so i just want to get kind of a a look and feel on how it's going to look initially and i think that that works fine so that's perfect so before we move on let's make some changes to the post-processing volume really quick here and let's look at the vignetting we'll go back and add some other things in here but the vignetting is is basically too strong i can't really see what is happening so I'm going to lower the intensity of the vignetting. Now we can see more of the screen and that's perfect. We don't have to worry about the, you know, the viewport being too big, being too big because I'm going to be fixing that later. So, so I think that's good for now. Now what I'm going to do is now let's focus on the shader. We still don't have the look that we're looking for, but that that's fine. We can, we're going to be changing that in a minute. So now the next thing that I need to do, let's go into the Spectrum Manager. It looks like that is set up correctly. We have our samples, go into our canvas. And in our canvas, we, we are basically feeding the UI Manager a material. The reason why we're doing that is because the UI Manager is the one that is responsible from, for communicating with the Spectrum Manager. In fact, if, you, if we open it up, I can show you how that works briefly. You can watch the previous video, which is gonna give you more details about how this was coded. But for now, just, just keep in mind that there is, you know, there's an instance of the Spectrum, Spectrum Manager on the UI Manager, and we're basically feeding the UI Manager with data that we're getting from the Spectrum Manager. So if we go down here, you can see the Spectrum Manager, the samples, that's, what, that's how we're getting the data. So the reason why we need to assign the other material is because that's the one that is going to be modified by the audio that we're getting. So we need to change this to be underscore two. So we're going to assign it to underscore two. Otherwise, it's going to be changing the material on the other scene. and We're not going to be able to see anything. So I think that works. Let's just do a quick test here and hit play. And looks like the music is good. Let's change this delay by 2.5. Okay, I like that better. Okay, so let's hit play again to stop it and let's just make sure that the lay by is set to 0.5. And, and again, don't for, don't worry about getting caught up with me because you're gonna be able to download and clone this code. It's completely free and it's gonna be available in the description of this video. So just FYI on that so that you don't have to rush and try to do things. You're more than welcome to stop the video and play and basically pause it while you get caught up. So that's up to you to how you want to handle that piece. So, so what I want to do next is now that we have these kind of kind of set up, 
Then the next thing that I want to do is I want to go into shaders and I want to double click on, I want you to double click on the formation on the square two. And we're going to open shader graph. So shader graph, basically it's loading. So if I do that, it's loading the new shader that we have. And, and right now, this is basically the shader that we created on the previous scene. I just basically duplicated it. So we don't, we don't see a lot of changes. So the other thing that I want to do, let's make sure that we change, let's change this default value to be something like, like 10. Because I want to see, I basically want to see something on the preview. If I don't have these default values here, it's basically going to set them, set them to zero and I won't be able to see a preview. Also the time speed, let's do, let's see, 0.5. I think, yeah, 0.5 works because that's what we're going to be using. And, and basically that's what we did on the, similar to what we did on the delay by. So I think that works perfectly. So now that we have those set, what I'm going to introduce you to is a new node. And that new node is basically a checkboard node. And if we go ahead and right click on the gray area here, create node, and we search for check. We're basically going to get that checkerboard and I call it checkboard. It's actually checkerboard. So I think that it's kind of the same idea. So now that we have that, we can see that, you know, we're getting, if we modify the frequency right here, we can get, you know, basically more resolution on X and also on Y. You can see we're getting more squares. So I'm going to set that to two and two for now. That's fine. And so the next thing that I want to do is I want to change the, basically the albedo value. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to associate the out, the out value from here to be the albedo value. And if you notice, I have a color that I have, that I have associated with it and we're not going to be using that color. So we just, we can just leave that aside for now. And in fact, we could just attach that color to the color of the checkboard. Let's actually do that. I think that that's a good idea. So let's assign it to, we can either assign it to color A or color B. So we can just assign it to color A and see what we get with that. And what that's going to allow us to do is we can change, if we want to now change the, basically the black dots, uh, we can change those. So we can go back in here and I can say, you know, color. And if I wanted to say, okay, red. So I think the cool thing about this is now we can control, you know, that area. We can determine what we want to show, what kind of color. We could actually create another color if we wanted to. And so what I'm going to do, let's do, let's call this color A. And then I'm going to create a new, I wasn't planning on doing this, but I think this is a great idea. And let's, let's just call this one color B. And to be more explicit, let's call it checker or color A so that we know what we're changing. Otherwise, we're going to we're not going to know what type of node we're changing. So checkerboard color B. Excellent. And the we can also change the variable. So which is the reference actually. This is the the reference name that you're going to use if you need to send this information through a script. So we're just going to give it the same name and it's going to add an underscore and we're going to do the same thing on this one. So that's cool. Now let's drag and drop the B. And now we have two properties. So we have one that controls color A and then this one controls color B. And cool, that gives it a really cool look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to B a little bit, a little bit of a gray. Let's try that and see. We will go back and, and change it if we need to. So the frequency, I think I'm happy, I'm happy with that, but I also want to be able to change that through code. So let's do, let's add a new variable for that. And I call them variables or properties is basically what we can expose through the shader. So this is going to be a vector too, because I have an X and a Y. So we just do that. We can also call it check checkerboard and then we're just going to call it frequency because that's basically what we're going to be exposing and then i'm just going to change the reference name and right now i have a set to two and two we can just set the defaults to be two and two cool and i'm going to drag it and drop it here and we're going to associate that with the frequency input and looks at like that looks 
cool. So now what's cool is I can change that through here and you can see that how, how that is changing. So I'm just gonna get set it back to two. We're gonna hit save. And I think the frequency, instead of doing, let's do a bigger, let's try. Let's see, 10 is too big, let's do, let's do seven and, let's do seven and seven. I think that, that will look really cool. Okay, so I think I'm, I'm good with that, with those changes. So I'm gonna close out a shader graph. You can see that we're starting to get some really cool, some really cool effect. Not quite what, what I really wanna get just yet. And the other thing that I wanna do is I want to, let's go back here. Let's see play and see how that looks. We're starting to get some, yeah. I think that's still, I think that's still going too fast. The other thing that I'm gonna do is I, I have a ground in there. I'm gonna remove the ground. I want it to be completely black so that we can get some of the bloom coming out. Okay, so I got that. That looks cool. And let's do, let's go back here and hit, hit play one more time. Let's change this multiplier to, let's see, let's do, let's do 300. Yeah, that looks, that looks cool. <laughs> And let's do 0.3, uh, 0.5. Okay, so 300.5, I think it's, it's what I want. So let's do 300.5, works fine. Then the other thing that I wanna do as well, let's go into the scene view and then make sure that we have these two selected. I want to, I don't want, I don't want these to be in the way. So I'm gonna, in this, in this scene, I'm gonna remove the overlay. I'm also going to be removing the, let's go ahead and remove the time speed. We don't need the time speed now. I also don't need the, the label for that panel. And lastly, what I'm gonna do here, so I'm just gonna move this to the side and we can just put it right on the side. I wanna focus on the scene. So I wanna have it still display because we're gonna be changing that and and I want, I want to be able to see the values as they're, as they're changing. So I think that looks cool. So now let's hit play, see what we're getting. And we're getting nothing. Let's see, oh, because I removed the, let me go back through and look at the, look at the console. Cause I think I remove, yeah, by removing those, I think we're gonna have, we're gonna have problems, so see time speed and the slider so i don't need to change those so let's go into here and make these optional time and speed slider change so what i'm going to do is actually a slider so let's add a new property and i'm just going to say bull make time speed slider optional now we can just set it to true by default and I'm also gonna make it serializable so that we can see it. So we are modifying the noise scale. So that one is very important for us. So I think that's good. And then what I'll do here is we can have the handler at it. Yeah, let's leave the handler. Cause if I wanna, let's say that I'm playing the game and the handler gets at it, but then I want to set the property to, to false, meaning that I don't want the time speed to get it modified. I want to, and then I want to toggle it back. I want the handler to be sending that event. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do it in the time speed. I'm just going to say if make time speed slider optional equal to true, then we're just going to say return. So we're not going to do, we're not going to change the values. Okay, so let's go back here and let's wait until it gets compiled and then we should get a new property right here. Excellent. So we're just gonna set it. We're just gonna set it to true. And if we hit play, that should work. And I'm still getting. I think I'm still getting an issue. So let's go into general. And I don't see my console. And yeah, it's probably that same. Okay. Yeah, the time speed slider is gone. So yeah, I can see why that's gonna happen. 
So what I'm gonna do is let's undo what I just did. And I need my time speed slider. In fact, I think that's let's undo one more time. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna just gonna add it back and then also add the label. And perfect. So what I'll do instead of instead of doing what we were doing is if I make it optional, I'm just gonna hide it. And right now we can see it, that's fine. So we can in fact just disable it from here. And that's still gonna be available through the code, but we're not gonna set it. So then the other thing that I'm not gonna do is I don't want this guy. And then now we can move even the invisible one. And we can move this up. So I think that should work. Let's just see play and see what happens. Okay, so it should be fine. Excellent. And everything is looking just looking at the at the values. Okay, excellent. So now now let's do let's do a small change. Let's go to the main camera. And and a lot of these things are tedious because you know you do it once and we I want to gain get the exact same look that we had on the demo scene. So I'll try to get as close as we can. I think I like that. Now let's go back into one of the spheres. Let's focus on the material for just one second. And what I want to do is I have a different frequency here. So what I'm going to do is because we set it to seven by default, I'm going to do the same thing. Same thing in here. Then the color, let's see, that's cool. The color of this, I'm just going to set it so I think we can have a we can have a red there and then oh I like that that looks cool if we go yeah uh, looks right about right about there I think I'm happy with that and I think everything else so if I modify some of these values I can do something like this okay cool so now let's go so now i think i'm happy with those values for now let's go back and look at the post-processing volume so so instead of me modifying this post-processing volume right now what i'm going to do is because if i change this one it's going to change the other scene so we need to we need to duplicate this just like we just like what we did on the other on the deformation underscore one and for the material and also for the shader so on this one i'm just going to do the same thing this one is going to be underscore one we're going to duplicate it to be underscore two. Then we're going to go back into this game object and associate it with underscore two. So the the other scene should have this one associated. So that should be intact. And then the one that we're going to be changing for this scene is going to be the underscore two. So that way we can have both scenes running. OK, so I, I think I'm happy. I'm happy with that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to be changing some of these values. So right now I have color grading in. I, I tweak a lot of these these settings last time and what I'm gonna do now is I'm probably gonna tweak him one more time so the temperature I'm gonna leave those to zero then on the on the exposure we can do something like 10.5 is fine then let's go ahead and see let's go back and for some reason my the color picker is not showing up. Let's see. To select the oh and that's because I haven't enabled that option. So enable the color filter and also the hue shift. So on this guy, I'm going to be doing something. Let's see. I'm just gonna go through here and see what we get. Until I'm I'm happy. Let's do so something like that. I think that works. Hue shift, we can do. Let's do a negative. Let's see, negative one. I think it's it's good there. And I think I'm happy. I can always change some of these settings as we as we get to. So I think I think let's see, doing zero is fine. I really like using the ACS. So make sure that you have that set temperature. It's going to be serious. So with well, these two could be actually disabled because we're not using them. 
I just incremented the exposure a little bit. And if I set these two off, you can see there's a big difference on that. So a lot of people ask me, Dilmer, what do you do to make the scenes look so cool? And honestly, it all comes down to, of course, your art artistic, artistic, you know, uh, thinking of how things should look like, but also, you know, tweaking things and trying different things. So in this case, I like to use the color grading a lot. So the other component that I'm gonna that I'm gonna be using and modifying, which I'm using already, is the intensity. So here's, you know, I had a question from one of my subscribers and one person in Reddit, like, you know, what the value should be on the bloom to get, you know, to get that bloom effect. And and this is basically what I've been what I've been doing on the intensity. We can go we can go pretty high and then kind of like tone it down until we're happy. You can also modify the threshold. Just be something like, I think something like that works fine. Then let's see on these. So you can kind of see like if I increment the threshold, we can kind of see more of a red around it, which is actually looking looks really cool. I think I'm I think I like that. It actually looks really cool. Looks a little cartoonish. We're also getting a lot of outlining. Then on the diffusion, we did, let's see, I've been doing, you can kind of see how that gives it a different look. If I hit play, you kind of see how that changes it. We can change this in real time too. So if I go and change, we're going to get a little bit more. There we go. So let's see, let's just do, just undo, I think that value looks good. So then let's try, let's look at some of these other settings and I think I'm happy with that one. On the color though, you kind of do, you know, you're, you're more than welcome to try different colors. I've been doing, I really like, kind of like a strong red. So you can go something like, And something about there. I think that looks cool. So let's see, let's hit play, see how that looks. Actually it looks a lot better if the threshold is not that high. And the intensity. So let's do let's do this one as point point six. So I'm gonna do point six there. Then let's see. Let's go back into our material because looks like we let's see noise scale on five. Okay, excellent. <laughs> it's pretty cool how you can make some changes real time so let's do 10 here 10 and 10 10 and i'm gonna go like i was saying back and forth until i'm you know until i'm happy with some of the colors okay so i think oh i think i like that i think the black color gives it a really cool look let's do black on b and then that color on a and then 10 and 10 on the x and y and i think that looks cool yeah that looks a lot that looks really cool okay so let's go back to post processing okay so now we have color grading we have bloom i think i'm happy with bloom right now the intensity of of this guy i'm going to increment it but then what i'm going to do is i'm going to change the you know right now it's like really really dark i'm just going to change it to be something about you know like a like a lighter a lighter black so we can see that through. If I do it all the way black, it's basically gonna, uh, gonna add a line. So it's gonna do something about, something like that works. You can see how the roundness affects it. So I think I'm happy with that. So now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna add a new, add a new effect. And this effect is gonna, is basically gonna make it, make it stand out. And that is a lens, lens distortion. So no, no destruction, distortion. <laughs> okay, let's go into a couple of these settings. So if I go ahead and change the intensity, 
you can change it to be something like I think I did been trying with 15 we can also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna enable all these different settings and we can we can tweak how some of these work and I really like when I change the scale scale value is 2.9 you can kind of see like if we animate these we can get some really crazy effects so let's go back to 0.9 on the other settings let's see we can do i think this is basically if we want to offset it so i think i'm going to leave it at zero zero the x multiplier i think i'm happy with the way that it that it look so i think i'm happy with those settings so let lens distortion is basically done now let's go into add effect and then this time around i'm gonna add chromatic variation we're gonna be increasing the intensity and you know if you're running on mobile you can enable this one for now this is just for you know for pc or mac so i think we're we're fine with we're doing that i'm gonna basically bump this all the way up because i really want that to come out so you can kind of see you know how how is is changing some of some of the edges here also some of the edges there kind of see how that affects it so if i change it if i change it to off that gives it a really cool look so i think that's good there and let's go back into the camera and just adjust the camera just a tiny bit more and that looks cool let's go back into the the sphere underscore one and go into the deformation material and we're going to modify so remember that I wasn't changing, I'm not modifying the time speed, so whatever I said here is what's going to stay. The one that is getting changed is the noise scale. So if I go, you know, more of a more of a lower number, that's going to be a little more cir circular, where if I do this, it's going to be more of a low poly, low poly style. This one's going to be modified by the music, so that's completely fine. Let's go back here and see if we can get... A cooler look and I think I'm happy happy with that okay let's go back into post-processing let's go check how we can make it stand out a little bit more increment the the post exposure to a little bit more there you can go and look at the color filter so if we get so you can see how Y looks really cool and also yeah that gives a really cool look Okay, so now let's go ahead and hit play and see how this is looking. This is cool. So if we have it, if we have that plane, let's say that you wanted to animate other things. One thing that it's cool to animate if you want to create some really cool effects is basically the scaling. So imagine if I have that animating there, then animating here. Then animate in there and kind of see how by changing some of those values we're really getting some cool effects so let's go back to 0.9 i think that's fine and the other thing that we did too that give, gives it a really cool effect is if i change this as you know as it's running so if i change it if i change the x on the checkboard you can see how that is changing the entire look kind of see yeah, it looks really cool. Let's go back into a 10 there. Now let's modify the Y. You're gonna see. So that gives it a really, really cool look. I kind of feel like I DJ when I'm when I'm doing things like this. So, so to be honest, I think that's everything, guys. See, if you guys have any questions about, you know, anything that I show you, let me know through the comments. And again, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, share this video to other people. That's really gonna help me in growing the channel. And don't forget to check the GitHub page because that's where you're going to be able to download this code. So thank you guys.